our travelers find themselves twisting and turning through the fabric of time, as if on a cosmic roller coaster. Their destination is not only uncertain, but in fact, has never before been seen by human eyes. Let's see where and when our time travelers have landed. Seems pretty dark to me, if you know what I'm saying. I'm very confident in this invention, let me assure you. I have no doubt we have been taken to the lightest moment in human history. A time without sickness, poverty, or disease. Or light, apparently. Perhaps the geospatial grounding circuit malfunctioned. We were in a hurry, you know. Maybe this is some sort of basement. Uh, Max, I don't think so. Look around you. There's nothing. No walls, no roof, no ground or sky. You mean we've been flung into outer space? I'm quite sure there would be a few more stars if we were in space. There has to be another explanation. Let there be ah! light. What was that? Max? What's going on? I haven't the slightest idea. Look, the time machine is beginning to activate. That's impossible. The machine is supposed to take us straight to our destination. If this is indeed the lightest, most perfect moment in human history, then there's nowhere else for us to go. Well, maybe you should tell that to your time machine because it sure looks like it's planning to make another jump. Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. What do you suppose that means? <laughs> let the water under the sky be gathered unto one place and let dry ground appear. familiar to me. Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. Is this how the world was made? I wonder how far we've been jumping forward in time. Let's see. According to the readout, our last two jumps have moved forward only one day each. How can that be possible? All this was done in a matter of days? Besides, my machine took us into the future, not the past. I'm sure of it. Well, it's going into the future now, apparently. Looks like we're about to jump another day forward. <laughs> ah! Let there be lights in the vaults of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark the sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vaults of the sky to give light on the earth. Oh, of course! It all makes sense now. I know exactly when and where we are. We're witnessing the six days of creation. It's been a while since we covered Genesis at Kids World, but I believe this is the fourth day. The Kids World Sunday School? You mean to tell me we're witnessing some sort of Bible story? Not a story, Max. We're witnessing the real thing from the very beginning. How can you be so sure? 
Well, if I'm right, we're about to jump again, and the next thing we'll see are fish in the sea and birds in the air. My favorite. Let the water teem with living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth, across the vault of the sky. Wow. How, how did you know that would happen? The fifth day, just like it says in the Bible. Next comes land animals, and people too. But if you're right, we're not in the future at all. But... Max, just watch. Uh. Ah! 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 Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. Incredible. I honestly can't believe what I'm seeing. But Max, I thought you said that we would be taken into the future. Sure seems this is the past, and as far back as you can go. What gives? I think I know, but be quiet. The best part is next. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. I never noticed that before. What? Well, God, when he spoke just now, he said, let us make mankind in our image. Who's God talking about? That is God the Father and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, all working together to complete this beautiful creation. It's all so perfect. Exactly. And that's why the time machine brought us here. Come again? Max, you said that your time machine is attracted to events in time based on their gravity, and that you wanted to go where everything is perfect? Exactly. In the future when all our problems, or at least most of them, would be solved. Your time machine works. It just didn't take you to where you thought you were going in the first place. It came exactly to the right spot. Come again? Look around you. You said it yourself. This is perfect. When God created the earth, everything was perfect. There was no sin, no death, no disease, no war, no murder, and no anger. And Adam and Eve over there, they get to spend time with God in the most beautiful garden you could ever imagine. Of course. Of course! I mean, I really wasn't sure all this happened before I saw it with my own eyes. But now I realize this is the perfect point in human history. My time machine works! It really works! Sure does. And if you look, it looks like it's about to work once again. What? I don't understand. If this is the lightest moment in time gravity, where everything is perfect, why would it be jumping again? Hang on! We seem to still be in the garden, but something's wrong. I can feel it. Sparks! What's wrong? I know what's wrong. What? The time machine took us forward to witness the fall. The what? The fall of Adam and Eve. Into what? Sin. This is where everything is broken. This is where Adam and Eve disobeyed God and introduced sin into the world. This is where pain and suffering and death come to be. Shh, 
Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Who is God talking to? The serpent, Satan. God is pronouncing judgment on Adam and Eve because they sinned, but he's also pronouncing judgment on Satan. Is, is there something I don't understand? He said he will crush your head and you will strike his heel? Who is God talking about? That's Jesus. He is the woman's offspring that God was talking about. Satan and sin would ultimately be defeated by Jesus. Thousands of years from now, and thousands of years before our time. But why are we witnessing this? Sin? Death? Suffering? My time machine shouldn't have brought us here. What's going on? I don't know, Max. I'm as confused as you are. It's like the time machine has a mind of its own. Or it's somehow being guided. By what? Or who? Incredible! Look at the machine! It's revving up again! It looks like it's even preparing for another really big jump, like our first one. Everybody, hold on to something! So that's it? Took a little time travel field trip, and now this thing's taking us home. All the better. I was getting pretty hungry. We're going somewhere, all right, but I don't think we're going home. If not home, then where? Or when? Just imagine seeing with your own eyes the six days of creation. Imagine hearing God speak the universe and all creation into existence. Imagine seeing Adam and Eve in a perfect world, free of sin, disease, sorrow, or death. Imagine seeing all that ruined by the very first sin, and the promise that Jesus, God's Son, would one day make things right. Our time travelers have not yet reached their destination. Where will they land next? Come back tomorrow to find out.